I, I just wanted to emphasise on this. We have an array of procedures, parts breakdown. So if you're going to attempt this, make sure you get in contact with us to get the appropriate documentation, which will give you guidance and uh, along with this video, um, hopefully make the task a, a little bit easier. So on the instructions, it says must be carried out by a competent person. So if it's too much or too daunting, to please do get an A-grade electrician to carry out the test or replacement or repair of your machine. If you are going to do it yourself, at a minimum, I would suggest carrying out a, a PAT test, which you probably won't be able to do yourself. So getting a registered trade person to carry out that electrical safety, uh, conductivity and, and um, assurance test uh, is an absolute must. And if you're in the cleaning industry, that's probably something you're already doing with your cleaning equipment. So all the parts can be seen in a couple of different various locations. Uh, our main website for Skyvac is skyvacaustralia.com.au. You can also see parts on ironicsystems.com.au and bluetongueindustries.com.au. We're just at making of this video, just about to release our new mega site on that particular site or mega store. So within each vacuum, um, the motors, whether they're one, two or three, there'll be various different wattages. Each motor has a different wattage per vacuum type and on this True Skyvac Industrial 85 it is a 3300 watt and three individual motors at 1100 watt. So it's very important in the way we maintain our vacuum um, and looking after our filter quality and keeping that filter in as remarkably as new condition as practically possible in a gutter vacuum system. So going forward after your initial purchase of your vacuum system, having a spare filter cartridge and changing out that filter cartridge and making sure the seals are in good condition top and bottom to prevent ingress of debris into your vacuum motors. So we're going to run you through this. Um, as I said, do get in touch for the instructions on how to change this vacuum motor in a particular head of this style. And uh, I must admit, this is probably the most complex of the lot. So if we can do this one, uh, the guidance on this will be, and the practical application of changing a motor in the other Skyvac range, the Commercial 75, the Sonic and the Atoms will be 100 times easier. So we will take note. Um, there's various um, multiples of parts, you know, capacitors, wiring, harnesses that can also be obtained and that can all be taken from the parts breakdown. So you might require switches from time to time, pr protective covers, handles and the like. So before we start this, we've read the instructions fully and we'll note the vacuum system is made up of different layers. So the first layer is the handle assembly which will cover the capacitance and, and wiring. Uh, in this particular process we're going to skip removing that and we're going to go straight on to the upper cover. So we'll need a couple of different tools to carry out this task. A Phillips screwdriver, some plain screwdrivers. If you've got a battery operated screwdriver that you can control the torque that would be great. So when you do pull this apart do take note of the screw length. The first time you do it um, there's an amplitude of layers and screws that make up this assembly and, and sub-assembly. So um, in, in the upper black housing has uh, six screws and the six screws are made up of two longer screws and two length uh, shorter screws. So th the two short screws will go to the front of the housing um, and the other four screws will, will pick up the black um, casing itself, the, um, which will be quite uh, relevant or apparent when you do pull those. But the only um, thing that you might um, mix up if you didn't uh, take note is there's two screw lengths that are uh, pretty similar and the, the shorter screws do go to the front of the casing. We've sped up the process so we have removed the top six screws to disassemble the first layer. Once we pull the first layer, um, you'll see some foam discs. The foam discs cover the exits of the motor and underneath you'll see a, 
um, amplitude of, of wiring harnesses uh, going to various individual switches. So if you were to, if you damaged a switch and you needed to replace a switch, what I often say is um, if, if, if it's your first time and, and definitely probably one of the easiest maintenance manual procedures is to take pictures. So to take pictures and mark wiring. So that can be with bits of um, masking tape um, labelled you know, one to four on each particular switch um, to enable easier reassembly of those particular um, wires on the back of those switches if it's a daunting task initially. You, know, you could put different colour tie wraps over each individual wire to make it easier going forward but whatever suits you to identify that wiring going to those particular switches. So once we break through um, the first layer we get on to the next casing and the next casing is held in by an array of screws, I think nine screws all of the same length which run around the outside. So we'll, we'll rip those off as well. Um, do take note of the power mix lever. So when we go to reassemble uh, we want the power mix sticker above the power mix lever. So that's one tip, tip and trick. So once we get into um, those two layers um, we'll have wiring going directly to the individual motors. There's a couple of uh, ducting ducts which are removable um, and you can see uh, we have two, two very similar and one, one shorter. So uh, do take note of uh, where they go in situ. So we'll pull our first cover off and with a fine screwdriver, it's made up in, of two parts and we're actually going to remove the upper, upper housing. So we'll dive in here and I'll show you once I um, pull these apart. that each individual uh, receptacle is held on uh, with some spade bits like this. So each spade bit is has a locking tab. So when you remove these spade bits you need to depress this little tab to retract the spade bit itself. So each motor will have uh, Two, two spade bits going to it, alternating current. Once we remove that, we can remove the two shields, two ducting shields, and we can put those aside. So we, we, we'll take note of <coughs> um, each switch will power our individual motor. So we mark these accordingly um, as to which particular wire goes to which motor. Um, in the manual, we always turn the center white switch on first. And from this particular setup, we can see that the, the white switch goes to the motor with the smallest ducting and shrouds. So we can go through each one of these and remove the shroud assemblies. This motor sits higher on this, so it's easier to disengage the wires. like so. so. So I can you know, label those in a way that's uh, easy for me to to reinsert. And I can call that short shroud. We're nearly there with that um, upper top top cover. Yeah, so once we've got 
access to that last back motor. Um, it'll sit aside there. Uh, we can remove that back cover, the third cover, and we can take the foam shroud off. Keeping everything together will make it a lot easier uh, going back together. And we can put those aside. So it does have an earth strap, so take note the earth strap. Um, it's a non-countersunk hole on the outside. And is a threaded screw. So all the screws around the outside um, are, are the same same length. So we can pull all those. The temperature sensor in the middle uh, we can also disconnect to remove the two shrouds. So once again we can mark those individual wires and you know it could be as simple simple as you know red on this side. Uh, just that continuity anyways. We'll pull those off, those spade bits, and that'll separate the the two plastic housing as assemblies and the wires. So that's probably the hardest bit um, in changing the motors. So we'll fly around these. This particular vacuum has been submerged, so we're just going through, and it's been requested that we um, it's all been dried out. We change the individual motors at a request. So again, uh, countersunk screws, and it's a bit hard to uh, confuse those with the other screws that we've removed. So we'll, we'll put those aside. Um, in the centre of the vacuum system itself, it's another three on the outside, and one in the centre. So. The one in the centre is distinguishably longer than the others, so do take note of that. So, having it all set out nice, that we can control the reassembly will, will make it a, a lot easier. So we now have access to the next layer. So we know that earth screw. Um, is in the position over here. So I'll, I'll mark that earth screw location for easier reassemble. That's the only one that's non countersunk. And we can remove the next layer. Um, we now have each individual motor um, which can be, can be removed and, and dislodged and, and replaced. So the motors have sealing rings and um, uh, seals top and bottom so we can go ahead and uh, put those aside so we have three of those three of those of that nature We break into that upper layer. And if you take a look here, we've, you know we've had it sitting in in a hot room, dry room for quite a while. But you can see there the amount of water in that vacuum still. So that goes to pay that um, yeah, it definitely was submerged. So we can go through. We'll dry this out further. We'll speed up the uh, the process. So each individual motor in itself. Uh, we can remove. So we have a seal assembly on the bottom which doesn't come with the motor and one on the top. Each motor is identical at 1100 watts. So we'll speed this process up.
placing those rubber um, seals back in, in situ. Okay, let's start the reassemble stage. So, a uh, few words of wisdom, don't take your sky back swimming. Um, but, yeah. but anyway, moving forward, um, three individual valves which are, are very important, which we need to reset at the bottom of each motor. When we look at the uh, this particular shroud assembly with the um, mixing lever, uh, we can inspect that. On the bottom of that shroud assembly is a individual rubber. So do take note of this mixing lever assembly, um, the seal that sits on the bottom. So spend a little bit of time to make sure that when we or when you do it, reassemble it, that the mixing lever still rotates freely. So we'll drop that into, into the bottom. Um, we'll throw the top over and very, very gently we'll get that in the right position as we saw um, as we saw there previously that I had it engaged. I can see through the aperture there that it's sitting as I had before and the mixing lever does move freely. So that's, that's really important and that's a, a big tip. That. And we'll go with the next motor, which is our highest motor and sitting on top. Particular nature like that. Our next level, as we talked about. Uh, we have the earthing screw, that particular earthing screw I can locate. So I've lined up the earthing screw on this side. Uh, another big tip and trick is don't do up all your screws until you've got everything started and as you do them up, um, do them up evenly to pull the whole casing down evenly. Remember the longer screw is to the centre. And um, just keep an eye on your mixing lever to make sure that it's, it is moving freely. All the same length screws around the outside. Earthing screw on countersunking. really critical just to get these even when you do do these up and keep an eye on your mixing lever as to um, pull it all up even uh, not to bind it up so I often move the mixing lever throughout the assembly to keep that uh, operational Now with a screwdriver, use the calibrated torque wrench. So remember, if this is a little bit daunting, um, do get somebody that is competent or an electrician that can help you out. The instructions are do give you a good guidance, um, and hopefully this video prior to you t starting the task will also help making those decisions whether you're going to tackle it yourself or not but at a minimum the PAT test uh, so that will be you can google that test and tag in your local area and um, if you're running a cleaning business um, you should be testing your equipment quite regularly anyway That's all still moving nice and freely. Let's redo it. 
up those screws. Final check tight. We are going into plastic, so we don't want to damage those all those standoffs. That's back on. So we're plodding along with the reassembly. So another tip and trick is to what I've done is put two screws back into these multiple layers here. So to limit the complexity of that, to hold these two together um, as we go to reassemble this next step. So we'll get that into position and, and pulling our wires to make sure we've got uh, maximum length. Uh, we'll reinsert the earth screw. And the outside. Uh, we do have our foam, foam disc which we'll, we'll feed on. And that'll clip around that of a nature like that. So, so the earth is connected. Uh, we've pulled in our wires to give us um, maximum length and I'll feed those through uh, back through the foam assembly and hook them up in the center. You do have someone else that can give you a hand just to hold the outer shroud. Uh, it will make it a bit easier at this point in time. The terminals are sort of, um, they're a spade bit and they do actively engage on the sensor. And correct orientation does help. So they're positively on. And we do start to run uh, quite tight with the wires now. So once they're on, the uh, most important step um, is to identify, as we marked previously, uh, the wiring. So we'll start at the back and we'll feed them through, through the cap assembly. So there's two caps or air duct shrouds. First one, the second one. And we'll just clip them onto the motor. So the little spade bits, as I said before, um, they, will, they will go on and they'll be positively engaged. And we can give them a little wriggle to make sure that they're, uh, they're not gonna come off being uh, alternating current, it, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which particular spade bit, but as long as they're positively engaged and checked, um, so they're not going to come off. The outer caps, when you do, prior to this stage, make sure you probably test these caps that they will go on. Um, they do, they're, they're basically picking up over the, the brushes of the motor. and. Um, engaging in a position so depending on the rotation of the motor assembly itself um, they could be pre pre-checked prior to uh, you getting much further ahead and finding out that you might need to rotate the motor to be able to get those into position that's our, our first one Wires are a bit longer, so we, things are getting a little bit easier. We'll thread it through both again. Make sure they're like that. We'll click those on. One. Two. A little jiggle, we can feel that it's positively engaged. Feed that shroud back through. We can see there if we don't position the brushes in the correct position and that the motor's tight to that lug, it'll be hard to get that ducting cover back on. So that'll go in position. The outer shroud there, which will go through. The wires are free. And our last one, being a bit higher, is going to be a little bit easier. We'll move our 
our indicator tape, which I've placed earlier on. Uh, this is a two-piece fitting as well, a bit shorter. Engage that wire there, positively engaged. And the same on this side. And both those are secure. And the outer shroud goes on. Reposition that foam. We'll pick up on the next step. Talk to you in a minute. So we're just going to put the next uh, assembly on. Uh, ha having a podger to line up the screws to get you started um, is probably a, a, a good guided tool. So we'll just get those started. Just a couple of turns each um, so you don't fight against yourself as we work our round. Make sure that all your cap assemblies are in place as you drop that uh, that last layer on. So we've got all those started, so we'll just fly around and nip those up. Make sure the power mix decal is over the top of the power mix lever. I'll fly around and uh, double check all those and we'll just put the uh, final stage um, longer screws in the back and there's uh, three different length screws here so we hope this has been a reasonable bit of a summary um, mid-length in the middle to give you a bit of a understanding changing a motor. Obviously the first time you do anything the uh, more daunting it is but being competent in what you're doing um, is very important so if you're not if you don't feel competent after reading the instructions and watching the video do get help. Do get help and most importantly uh, do carry out a PAT test on your appliance. If you can't do that yourself, get a PAT test done by an approved test and tag facility and that's going to ensure compliance uh, with your particular with your particular item. hope this has been a, a great help and a great overview. I know it's been a long tedious video but uh, these are in so many different locations all around the world and uh, to be able to show you how to change a motor and this is the most complex with the guided instructions uh, the parts break down I hope this has given you some insight in relation to going forward and maintaining your Skyvac check out all our other videos under Blue Tongue Industries multiple websites Ionic Systems Australia, Skyvac Australia mormon.com.au and um, Blue Tongue Industries Thanks for watching, we'll catch you on the next video.